I'm Kyneton and today I'm going to show you how to build an API in Python and also we are going to be building an SDK. Actually I already set them up but I'm going to show you how to do it and then we are going to build an API client, an SDK client and I'm going to show you the difference between the two of them. So if you look at my, my screen you see that we have a number of files. I'd like to go to the API for instance. If I go to this API and simply simply right click and run, you see that it starts a server at port 8888. And if I click on this server, it opens up the browser. So let me see if I can drag it across. So it opens up the browser and it says, welcome to student API. Now, if I go back here, you can see that this is exactly the piece of code that executes to display in the browser. So that is basically how the API works. It sends data to the browser, or basically you communicate out with the API via HTTP uh, request response. So in this case, I have an API that fetches data from the database and also can store data in the database. This API I build is for managing student records. So you can look at um, uh, slash students, can get a list of students. So if I go back to my browser, and go to slash student, for instance, you have a list of student returns. So this list of students is stored in a local file, which is SQLite. Now I'm not going to take you step by step at this point because this code is quite easy to understand. So this is the API, we use Flask, and we connect to the database, then the home route, which is a slash, returns a string welcome to student api and if we go to slash student we are going to get um, a connection to the database and then it's going to do a run an sql query to return data to to and return it um, using as a json object back as http response so that's basically how an api works and this is a python api after now we are going to build an api client but for now this is an API that manages student uh, records. Now, an SDK is very important to understand the difference between the two. An SDK is a collection of tools. For simplicity, let's say it's a collection of functions that provide, that perform certain operations and you can use these functions in your code on your application. So these functions have been written for you and packaged into a kit. So instead of writing these functions by yourself, you already have them written. So this SDK might actually contain the same functions as the API, but the difference is that for API, the request, the communicating with this function is done via HTTP request and response, but for the API, the requests are um, the operations of this function to use these functions, you have to actually call these functions and get data from these functions, not through HTTP this time. So it's exactly about the same thing in terms of the function operations being performed, but the way you communicate with these functions is what makes the difference between an API and an SDK. An API stands for Application Programmer Interface, while an SDK stands for Software Development Kit. So now I have this API, it does get students, it does get by ID, these are basic SQL statements. It also does add students and it does update students as well. I'm going to now open the SDK and then let's see how it works, or uh, how, how it uh, relates with this. So this is exactly the same thing. We have add student, we have get student, we have get student by ID doing exactly the same thing, but in this case, we don't have the routes, the HTTP routes. If we go to the SDK, to the API, you see that we have app route here, and you can see app route in each of these functions. Now, uh, in the case of the API, we use SQLite, we use Flask, but in case of the SDK, we simply use basic uh, Python tools. Actually, we also use the database, but we use basic Python uh, um, language syntax. Now, how do you communicate with an API, with an SDK? 
With Mindjunda for API, you communicate via the HTTP request response, but for SDK, you simply need a client. So assuming I want to com consume this SDK I've written, I'm writing a Python application, let's call it Python client, sorry, let's call it API uh, SDK client, and I want to consume the SDK. I don't have to write all these queries to add or delete SQL statement, no. I just want to say add student or get student. I simply call the function from my SDK. So in this case, I'll simply say import. So this is my SDK client at this point. Again, just to mention, if you are joining me for the first time, this is how I make my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. And also all the code you need for this application is in my GitHub repository and also in my website. You can find the links to this place in the repository below. So you have everything you need. So I'm going to say, call this uh, create um, SDK client, SDK client. And we are simply going to say import SDK, import student SDK. And I'm going to simply say students. I'm going to fetch a list of students. It's going to be student SDK dot get uh, dot get students. That is basically it. So to print out the student, I may just I'll just say for students in students. I'm going to simply print the students. All right. So this is basically how you consume your SDK function. So you see that you don't have to worry about um, creating the cost of connecting to the database because this work has been actually done in the SDK. So if I run this at this point, if I run this client at this point, you see that it fetches the data, exactly the same data we already had using API, right? Okay, so this is the SDK. Now let's now try to do an API client because you can actually fetch your data from an API without having to use a browser. You can also communicate with your API using an API client. Python allows you to actually write up an API client using the requests module. So I'm going to just call it create, um, let's call it API client. So I think we are going to need import requests. So now requests, you have to install it using PIP install requests. The same way you are going to use PIP install SQLite 3, PIP install Flask. So all this you need to, uh, in case of requests, you need to install. So I need to uh, say API. You need to specify the URL of the API you want to fetch data. So I'm going to call it API underscore, underscore URL is equal to now the URL is where the data is coming from, which is this URL right here. So I'm going to just copy this and use it in my code. Okay, so this is my URL. Let me just so I want to fetch data from this URL. So I'm going to simply say um, check response. Let me just call it response is equal to requests requests dot get and specify the url so at this point the response will now contain the data coming from the url and um, let's see what is in response i'm going to now say by the way i can close this for now i can say for response in let's call it for res in response and i'm going to say print res so at this point, let's see what prints out. So I'm going to run API client. So it prints out exactly the same data we had from the SDK. The SDK fetches data from the database and sends it to the SDK client. In the same way the API fetches data from the API. Of course, the API also connects to, connects to the database and returns it to, this time we've written a simple API client. Now, before I, I continue, I'd like to mention that if you build an SDK, you need to kind of package it into a kit. Somehow you need to package it and distribute it to people or to developers so that they can use because it's a software development kit. Normally, we do uh, use Node Package Manager. Uh, 
npm and we have this npm where we publish our SDK or our packages so that developers can use it. But npm is for node applications, right? But this is a Python application. So we can directly publish Python application to or release or uh, publish Python application to npm. And so there must be a way to wrap uh, a Python application inside a node application and be able to publish it to, to node, to node uh, npm JS online. We are going to do this in the next uh, tutorial after this one. For now, I'd like to give you an assignment. The assignment I want to give you is take time to go through all these files, try to understand them. Second, complete the API client to actually do get by ID, insert a new student, delete a student, and update a student, and perform the same operation in the API client. So do the same in API client, do the same in SDK client. That can help you get up to speed on how uh, the API and the SDK actually works. So I'm going to be stopping here. I'm making all the codes available for you. And if you are following my tutorials on fleet management, please, or fleet MS, please um, give me some time. I'm going to come back to this tutorial on fleet management. I've been very busy uh, for the past uh, few months. I've also been having a bit of health challenges, but I think I'm better now. And I'll be up to speed with the fleet MS, uh, maybe in a couple of months. Well, again, I'd like you to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and also visit my social network profile, my website, kindsonthegenius.com. Um, find me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn or Instagram, and try to communicate with me, and then I can help you uh, solve some challenges you may have as much as I can. And then I'd like to thank you again for viewing, and let's see in the next part.